What's up, everybody? My name is Devin Burr, a.k.a. Mr. Burr. Today, we're going to talk about infinite banking. What is infinite banking? It's all over, it seems like, recently, but people are actually misunderstanding what it is. It's a concept. It's not a product. A lot of people out there are pushing infinite banking as a product to make commissions, and that is definitely not what it is. So in this video today, I'm gonna go over exactly what infinite banking is, what the concept is, so you can understand it more and it can help you in your life. So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do so and hit that bell so you get notified when I put out these videos. Let's go. So what is infinite banking? Infinite banking is really just a concept of how to move money, how to mimic what banks do with money. And why would we do that? So Banks are very good at making money. They make 400 to 1300% on the money we place on deposit. You can look that up on bauerfinancial.com. On bauerfinancial.com, you can look up any bank in the entire nation, any year, and you will see that they don't make anything less than 400 to 1300% on your money. Infinite banking is just taking back that function so that instead of them making that much money on your money, you make that much money on your money. And it's actually quite simple. So let's go to the whiteboard and I can show you guys exactly how it works. Check us out. So first things first, we need to understand how banks view money. In order for us to mimic what banks do, we have to think like banks think and that way we can mimic how they treat money. Now, when we put our money in the bank, it's a deposit, right? We, as people, believe that's an asset, right? We're putting money in a bank account and it's, it's an asset to us, it's our money, right? To the bank, your deposits are actually a liability, okay? Basic economics, liability and asset. Liability takes money out of your pocket, an asset puts money in your pocket. So we as Americans view deposits completely different than banks do. That's first thing. They're viewing your deposits as a liability. Why is that? For you to put your money in the bank, what do they have to do? They have to pay you interest. It's very, very low, but they still have to pay you interest. So it is a liability to them. So what do they do? to make that liability an asset. They loan your money out. And that again is completely different from what we've been taught. We think of loans as a bad thing, right? If you get a loan on something, you're like, I'm in debt. I have to pay interest to somebody else. Now the bank though, looks at it differently. They look at a loan as an asset. And if you can understand that little point right there, That'll help you start mimicking what the bank does. View your loans as an asset. And there are ways to make loans an asset. I'm gonna show you how, so check this out. Let's take a look at how the bank turns loans into assets. Now, don't get hung up on my art because I am not that good at it, but whatever. Here's what they do. So let's say you put deposits in the bank, right? You put $100,000 in the bank. The numbers are arbitrary, just focus on the concept. 100 grand goes into the bank as a deposit, that's a liability to the bank because they have to pay you interest. Let's just say for easy math, they pay you 1% interest to hold your 100 grand there. That means now they are controlling your 100,000 at 1% interest, okay? They take that 100 grand and they lend it out on a loan to let's say someone buying a really nice car, okay? Person buys the car, and the bank charges, let's say 9% on that car loan, okay? They paid you one, they used your 100 grand to go make 9%. Now, when the car dealership gets that money, do they keep it or do they put it back into a bank? It flows back into a bank, right? As soon as that happens, again, remember, Money on deposit, money sitting in a bank is a liability to a bank. So what do they do? As soon as it hits the bank, they lend it out again. So let's say now they lend it out on a house, okay? So we've got homeowners that wanna buy a house. So the bank lends on a mortgage, right? And let's say they lend at 8%, okay? So what the bank is doing now, again, is they are 
paying you one, they're lending out an eight. So they're keeping the difference. They're keeping the spread on money by using your money. So again, if a homeowner buys a house, that means that the money goes to the lender, right? Does the lender keep that money in their mattress or something like that? No, they, they give it back to the bank. Money is always flowing back to the bank. And the bank is in total control because they are the bank. They're lending our money. So they create the terms. They do credit checks. They do everything to make sure that they have collateral, which is the house and the car. So the bank have become masters at leveraging our money to make more. Okay. Now think about this. What has the bank done? They've used $100,000 of our money to lend it out to other people. They've paid us 1%. Now they've made 9%. And they also made 8%. So that's 17% is what they made, but they paid us one. So what's their rate of return? Most people would say they made 16%, right? Because they made 17, they paid us one. But you have to look at it this way. Their 100 grand was not used. It's our 100 grand. The only money that they've used is 1% of a hundred grand. That's all they got to pay us. So that means they turned 1% into a 16% spread. That is a huge return because they're simply using our money as leverage, as, as a loan, as control. You can do the exact same thing. You can mimic what banks do I'm going to show you how to do that. All right. So now we know what banks do with money, how they view money. They view deposits as liabilities and loans as assets, right? They turn our money that we place on deposit into an asset for them by loaning it out to other people. Those people send it back to the bank. The more times the bank can do that and turn the money, that's called velocity of money. The more times they can do that and turn it over and over and over, the more profit they make off our money, okay? So here's how we can mimic the bank, how we can take back control of the banking function in our life so that we make those profits, okay? So that when we buy a car, we're borrowing from our bank, not their bank. When we go to get a house, when we go to do an investment, things of that sort. So the way it works, again, Infinite banking is a concept. It's that concept I just showed you of mimicking the bank. It is not a product. However, the best product to do infinite banking with is none other than a specifically designed whole life insurance policy. That's it. It's got to be specifically designed. That's the key thing. It's not your off the shelf whole life insurance policy. That's built for a death benefit. Infinite banking policy is built for the cash value. Meaning when you put money in, you can instantly take loans. Remember, loans, banks view as assets. So you can immediately take loans using your money as collateral. So think about this. You put money into a high cash value whole life insurance policy. It's sitting there in the policy as collateral to get a loan from the insurance company. The insurance company is giving you a loan or an advance of your future death benefit because your money is the collateral to give you a portion of your death benefit while you're alive. That's all it is. So think about that. It's the same thing as the bank's doing. You're putting your money into a policy and that policy is collateral. That money is collateral to get a loan from the bank. Just like when the bank gives you a loan on your house, the house is the collateral. So if you don't pay the bank back, what can the bank do? They can take the collateral. They can take the house. Here's the beautiful thing about life insurance policies and why they are so good at mimicking what banks do or using them to mimic if they're built correctly. You put money into a policy, that money is collateral to get a loan from your death benefit. You never have to pay it back. 
you're in control because the insurance company knows you're not going to live forever. You're going to pass away at some point. So if you never pay back this policy loan, they'll just deduct it from your death benefit when you pass away. So you never have to pay it back. You should, but you never have to. That's the cool part. It's an unstructured loan. When you borrow money from an insurance policy, unstructured, insurance company will never tell you you have to make a payment. How much? When? Unstructured. You create the terms. You are the bank, right? So think about this. You put money into a high cash value, whole life insurance policy. That money is guaranteed to grow. It's contractually guaranteed. Whole life insurance policy, I will say it again, is contractually guaranteed to grow tax free. So every single penny that you put into your policy, guaranteed to grow tax free. Right now, it's three and a quarter, 3.25 guaranteed. So that means that you'll always have more that you can borrow. Again, take a loan and you have more that you can borrow, meaning you can have more of an asset, right? Again, it's all about changing your mindset and viewing money and treating money like banks do. Banks treat loans as assets. So if you have a pile of money that's always growing, guaranteed to compound, guaranteed to get bigger year after year, tax-free, that means you always are guaranteed to have more money to borrow against. That means you have more assets that you can go use to make more money. Here's a prime example. Let's say you put 100 grand into a policy, right? Just like we talked about on the whiteboard, $100,000 into a policy. It is compounding and growing tax-free for you, guaranteed. Now, what can you do? You can borrow against it, again, borrowing from your future death benefit, using this money as collateral. That means it's still sitting there compounding and growing. So you take a loan, the insurance company will give you a loan, and they'll let you have your future death benefit, but they'll charge you a percentage. Remember, it's exactly like the bank. When we put our money on deposit, we're giving a loan to the bank, right? They have to pay us 1% like I used on the whiteboard. So that is a liability to them, right? Here's the thing. You're using the policy the same way. You're getting a loan from the insurance company. So they're going to charge you an interest rate. They charge 5% right now. So it's simple interest. That's the crazy part is let's say in your policy, you're making 6%. That's generally what it comes out to with dividends. Dividends just aren't guaranteed. However, companies we've used, they've paid dividends every single year for over a hundred years. Not guaranteed, but they're pretty much a sure thing. So if you have a pile of money that continues to grow and you continue to borrow more from it and the insurance company lets you control the money, for a percentage, so they're letting you control your future death benefit for a percentage, it's exactly like the bank. The bank controls our money or by giving a percentage, right? They're giving us 1%, let's say, to control our money. Now, since they control it, they can take it and go make more than 1%. It's the exact same thing with infinite banking. You're putting your money into a place that's guaranteed to grow tax-free. Now you can borrow against it. It's still going to grow because you're not removing it. You're just borrowing against it. Then you control your future death benefit, that money, for a percentage, 5%. All you got to do is take it and make more than 5%. Let's say you take it and you lend it to me on a real estate deal to keep math easy. And I pay you 15% interest. So that means that it took you 5% to control $100,000. You lent it to me at 15. You're keeping the difference, just like the bank. You're keeping 10%. But here's the kicker. It's also making you money in the policy at the exact same time. Guaranteed. So that means every single year, you can borrow more than you could the year before. And that means every single year, you have more money that you can go make more money with. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing because you're in 
total control, just like the bank is. You're in control because you never have to pay the interest on the policy loan. You should, but you never have to. You never have to pay the policy loan back. You should, but you never have to. And the greatest part is you're paying the insurance company. Let's say you pay them 5%, like I said. That helps them be profitable, okay? The insurance company is all about making profits. They do very, very, very calculated investments. Insurance companies calculate risk. That's all they do. So they make very, very calculated investments. They don't lose money. That's why these insurance companies have been profitable every single year for over 100 years. That's through the Great Depression, World War I, World War II, meltdown of OA, you name it. They're always profitable. That means they know what to do with money. So think about this. If they're lending you money, your future death benefit at 5%, it's not a risky thing for them. There's zero risk because they know you're going to die at some point. They just don't know when. So you're either going to pay that policy loan back tomorrow or you're going to pay it back when you pass away. They'll just deduct it from your death benefit. There's no risk to them. Here's the thing though. Why you should always you would you should want to pay the 5% interest to the insurance company for controlling that money and making more with it because when you pay the insurance company you're helping them be more profitable these insurance companies we use are mutually owned companies and that means you're a part owner of the company so when they're profitable guess what you get a dividend so guys, you're paying interest to a company that you're a part owner of to control a portion of your death benefit while you're alive to go make more money with it while your money that you put in is collateral to get that loan and it's guaranteed to keep growing and compounding. So every single year, you can borrow more, you can go make more, all on a guaranteed basis. Obviously, what you do with the money outside the policy, you're not guaranteed to make money there. But if you're investing in things, you should know what you're doing. You should um, obviously assess your investments and make sure that you're not getting into trouble with a lot of risk and all that kind of stuff. So bottom line is, guys, infinite banking is a concept. It is not a product, okay? However, the best product for the concept is a properly structured whole life insurance policy with a mutually owned company that pays dividends. A lot to say there, but that is the best product. Why? It's guaranteed to grow. It'll never go down in value. It only goes up. There's no structured payback on the loans, so you're in total control because it's always guaranteed to go up. As long as you just keep putting more money in the policy, you'll never have a problem. You'll just always have more money to use so that you can go make more money outside the policy. It's the only financial vehicle that allows you to do it. Guaranteed growth, while you can borrow against it with an unstructured payback and an unstructured loan. It's the only product that provides that. Guaranteed costs, nothing ever goes up. So it is the best product. It's a concept, it's not a product. You could use infinite banking with a HELOC. You could do that, but there's no guarantee that the HELOC or that your house is going to keep going up in value, like your policy. Policy is guaranteed to go up in value. On a HELOC, you have to repay your loans, right? There's a structured loan when you take a loan from a HELOC. So you don't have total control like you have in a policy. When you use the money out of a HELOC, it's not compounding and growing for you in the house, right? The house could go up in value, but it could also go down. The HELOC amount could go down. So the concept can be used with other products. It's just the best product because of, again, unhindered control, guarantees, and basically, again, just control. The more control you have, the less risk you have. So the best product for the infinite banking concept, because it's a concept, is a properly structured whole life insurance policy. Now, if you wanna learn more about how this concept works, go ahead and check out the link, not in the bio, but in the description, and you can check out a full training on the actual concept. And from there, 
you can jump on the a call with someone on my team so we can help you understand it more and how you can use it in your life. So hope you guys got value from this. If so, make sure to like and put a comment down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that. Until next time, I love you guys. Peace.